Hello everyone, Mark Kukrow, Adrian Ike. Thanks for following, watching us live on Facebook. And uh, so today we have Q&A. We have a few questions from the last time. For those of you that are new, thank you for being here and watching. We are going to do these every week, Tuesday at 7 p.m. until kind of we get back to normal uh, as academies open and we start getting back to classes. If you could do us a huge favor, please. It takes two seconds, doesn't cost you anything. Please send us a like so that we know you're watching. Two comments and let us know where you're from. So hopefully we'll have people from all over the world. And then when we share this post-production, uh, it can go all over because friends all over the world know that we're here. And the other thing is please share this uh, broadcast now. So if you could just go down to the share button, share it with your friends, your teammates, maybe you're uh, in a jiu-jitsu group or a martial arts group, but that would be awesome. And the only thing that we ask, if you could do us a favor, um, is to go uh, like our Academy page. So it's Integrated Martial Arts Academy. It's in the event. It's in the link on Facebook. We'll put it on the link after at the end. But if you could like our uh, page, we would appreciate it. We want to help as many small businesses as possible. And we're going to go, and anyone that's on here, we're going to go and like your Academy page as well. And then finally, if you could, just go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. It's more Kirk Rowe, Jiu Jitsu, and we'll also have the link in our event. But that's it, so thank you for coming. And the first question is, how do I get someone's elbows away from their body when they're really doing a good job at keeping them tight? And uh, you know the saying in Jiu Jitsu, keep your family close and your elbows closer. So how do we get the elbows away? Let's go over a few things, okay? So lay down, please. And we'll give you another view too, so we'll turn. So nice tight elbows, okay? I need to occupy this space right here. And of course, <laughs> well, he doesn't want me to, okay? So we have opposing goals, the essence of jujitsu. So how do I get this elbow weak? If I just pull and I drop my hips, he's gonna base with his feet and frame and it's going to be very difficult. So I have to look at the three things that I need to control, his neck, his shoulders, and his hips. One's good, two is much better, three, this person's in trouble. So when they frame, in this particular case, Adrian, I'm gonna to start to use this leg to open up this elbow. And I'll show you what I mean in a movement first, but I'm gonna move in a circle, you can frame all you want. And I'm gonna push, 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 push with my body, and then this elbow now, has a little space that I can drop my hips into and scoot under and open the elbow. Okay, I do this all the time. It's very effective, even if the person has a really tight grip, because my entire body is pushing across his femur, it's gonna enable him, me, to turn him and twist his spine. And when you twist somebody's spine, it's very difficult for their muscles to work at their full capacity. So I'm in this grip, this elbow's nice and tight. Pull it in tight, man, don't let me get in there. Okay, so, and I'll, I'll come around to the other side too. My hands are like this, and I walk just like this. Now, his knees are facing that way, and I drop my left hip, and I can scoot a little and make like a circular motion with my body if I have to. A good detail to keep in mind is to keep this elbow from going to the ground. So I hold, I drop my hips, and then I move, and then here we are. Okay, and I'll show you from this side as well too. Turn this way, please. Just like this. Okay, I'm gonna move his knees, and then when his elbow's up, I'm gonna make space and then show you how I scoot in there. So, my hands are like this, my toes are alive, my heels are turned in, I move, and this elbow comes up. Now what I do is I drop my hip, and I move this way. And then I establish the cross-eyed position. So let me tell you, man, that is a really effective way. And you know someone is good at jujitsu, but they've been training for a while when they use their feet. So if you have four legs, why not use your feet? I mean, if your feet are just up while someone's holding you on cross-eyed, you're at a huge disadvantage. So you wanna make sure that you use your feet. Now, if he uses his feet. It's a little more challenging. It's a little more challenging, <laughs> you make it difficult. And then I have to think and go, hmm, okay, how do I, how do I beat his improvement? 
And that's what's beautiful about jujitsu is I get better, I do something else. He figures it out, he starts to counter it and shut it down or completely stop it, and then I have to come up with something new. And so there's this cyclical evolution that takes place in jujitsu, which is one of the beautiful parts of the art. Now, the next question, uh, by the way, that question was for Dan in California. So, Dan, if you're watching this, hello. If not, I appreciate you asking. The next one was from Jason Foley, and that was, could I please explain some of the details about what, and I'm a, I'm a black belt under Master Peter Sauer. I'm very honored to be. And uh, we call this uh, affectionately, the, the uh, respectfully, the Peter Sauer Mount, because he does a lot of little details that uh, I don't see many people do, or if I do see them, they typically train with him. So let's share a little bit of those today, and I'll go over the principle. Okay, so the first thing is we have to understand, and this is a general rule, you don't want to push, pull, or twist equally with more with two limbs or more at the same time. And uh, yes, it's a rule that can be broken, kind of like crossing your feet. You can when you really know when, but in the beginning, you probably shouldn't push, pull, or twist equally unless you really understand jujitsu. And then if you really do understand it, you probably think you don't know that much like most of us. Okay, so he's gonna put his hands on my hips and he's gonna lift me straight up. Yeah, and it's very easy. And look, I mean, I'm not that heavy. Put me down. But he can lift me, and that's because most people, our bodies are designed to push weight like this. We lift weights like this at the gym and everything. So why would I let him do that? I'm letting him use his muscles the way they were designed, which is no good for me. So now I can start to shift, move, twist, and get off uh, the plumb line basically, right? So he's gonna push and I'm gonna just move one hip down and that's it, now push. Now I have a lot of weight on this one and just a little on that. Now what I'm gonna do, is turn, drop, and bring my legs back just a little. Now push me, please. Now I'm not even trying. Now you see how my toes are pointed? You'll feel the difference when I pull them in. And you can just feel the weight, okay? Because what it's doing is it's making my back arch a little more into him. Specifically, the question I got was, going over this, and we can get to the elbows in just a second, okay? So here, I don't want to be over to the center of his spine. I want to be off a little and just connected, okay? Now there's a few things here. If he pushes my knee, push, okay? If I fight and I resist, I'm gonna to want to get stuck in half guard. And I don't want to get stuck in half guard, right? So I'm here, he pushes, and I extend, and I keep my heel against his body. This get elbows get easy. And I just keep my heel there. It's much more difficult for him. And while this may look easy, it does take some practice, I promise. So, uh, but when you get good at it, you'll really appreciate it. So when he pushes, that's fine, okay? Put your elbows in nice and tight. Okay, so how do I get these elbows that are nice and tight? Defend like this, right? How do I do this, okay? So, well, he's kind of curled up and the more you curl in, the more your body is being used the way it was designed to be. So I have to bend something. Look, that's it. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> okay, this is terrible. But there's a couple ways to do this. This is one here and you just move. And now you have a mu now these elbows are open, okay? So this is one. The other one is you put your hand on top of the head, above the ear, pull, and now you can get those elbows out. Man, I'm sorry, man, it's terrible. But uh, you know, the thing is, is like, I love when people say, oh, is a gentle art. It's the gentle art, it's not so gentle. And <laughs> really it means pliable art. It doesn't really mean gentle as in like delicate, right? That's a big, um, I guess misunderstanding about the term itself, but the way that you do that is if you look at my body and you push my head, how can you possibly have a lot of strength on this side? This one's already pushed in for you. So this one's weak and that's the one you take advantage of. Can I get a couple more here please just lie down? Okay. And of course these are just ideas, right? It just depends, you know? Like, do you want to use leverage? Or do you want to use tactics? And tactics are good too, right? So strategy is the overall approach. Tactics are the tricks that we use. And then leverage is a, a force that can lift, right? It's a prying force. So if I have this here, put your hands in. Yeah. 
Now I'm under the yeah. Now I'm under the elbow. Okay, and then I can go for arm bars, and I can go for everything else. What I also like to do hold is drop this. Yeah, and now pull your hand out, and then you can go when they move their arm. So you can trap it just a little bit, but keep your toes up. My toes on this side are up, and I'm pinching just a little bit to feel what he's doing. I'm not pinching on and holding on for dear life. So these are just a couple of options. So another one, go ahead, please. Is to just grab, yeah, right here, and move. So this is against my body, and I lift. And then you can go just like that. And make sure, when you do that, <laughs> your palm is up. Because if you pull a person's sleeve with your palm down, your body is very weak. Now I have my hand here. So if you think, well, man, you better let go of the collar. You're right. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this, get off. Now he can't bridge me that way. So now I pull, and then I take the hand out of the collar, and then I catch, and I move my body up. So, there's no guarantees in jujitsu, but I think those are some pretty good options. So, Jason, I, I hope that helps. But if I could give you a visual analogy of what that mount is, if you've ever seen like a canoe or a kayak, anywhere in the ocean and there's people paddling, they typically have an outrigger on the side and that's to prevent tipping. And that's kind of where your body is. Instead of being here, it's more like this. And then you now you have to lean and post on this hand so you have to keep it away from them. But that's kind of the principle behind that technique. Do we have any questions yet, Bailey? Or Okay, so for those of you watching, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. We have a list of things to go over. And again, if you're new or you just joined us after we started, thank you for watching. Welcome. Do us a favor. Give us a like. Tell us where you're from. Comment on the live feed. And then share this with your friends. And uh, we appreciate it. And of course, we'll post this after so you can you know, share it. And just do us a favor, like, a, like our academy. Just go on Facebook, Integrated Martial Arts Academy. Click like. We'll appreciate it. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, we'd love for you to go to there. Uh, it's Mark Kirko Jiu Jitsu. And subscribe to that as well too. So there's a lot going on and I feel like we should at least do a little bit for the community and do what we can while everyone's at it. That's really why we're doing this. Uh, the next, yes. Mm -hmm. Daniel Minos wants to uh, repeat the crying move but from the other side. Repeat the? The crying move. From the elbow. Oh yeah, probably from mount. Can you ask Daniel? Is that from mount or from cross side? We'll give it. Give you a second to answer. Um, Andrew Ruiz is here from Ogoki Academy. Nice. Good to that. see you. All right. We'll give him a minute. If not, we'll just go over both of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just, hmm? From the mount? Okay, so lie down. So Daniel, tune in, and if we're not turned around the right way, let us know and we'll be glad to turn around. You sit the other side. We're gonna get on an angle, so. Yeah, so, from the mount? Yep. Right, okay. Okay, so here's the deal. I want you to watch his neck and his shoulder. Tell me when you're comfortable. Yep. Okay, so now, what I'm gonna do is just go here, and I'm gonna pull, and look, and that's it. And man, that's uncomfortable. What I like about doing this, although it's very simple, is my elbow is out for base. So if he begins to bridge, yeah, look, my elbow's out. I have a good tight connection. It's really difficult for him. The other one is if I had my hand in the collar and I'm like this, I'm gonna grab this palm up and I'm gonna pull and then go like this and watch. This comes out a little and it goes over. And now I have that across his body. So, I hope that helps. Let us know if that was it. Just say that was it. But uh, let me tell you, when you move a person's body this way, it's very difficult for them to be strong with the arm that's on the long arch. This part's already compressed, so that's kind of tight, so. Derek Davis says that it looks like you can find some jokes there. Oh, Derek, we can find a lot. <laughs> we can find jokes that, I love jokes. You just can't deny they work. And, uh, you know, I think Grant Maristelio, you know, the saying that he says, many of you have heard it, but it's, you know, a tough guy can fight when they're in an arm bar or their arm or leg is injured, but nobody can deny a choke. Uh, you can't fight asleep. So I really like chokes. Um, 
You just have to make sure that your jujitsu is not dependent upon the gi. It should be, you should be able to rely on it, but if you don't have one, you shouldn't be completely lost, and vice versa, right? You should do no gi, that makes your gi better. You should do gi, it makes your no gi better. I think you should do all of it. Daniel, yeah. Daniel said that was it. Perfect. Um, JN Hiremath is uh -huh. asking, uh, what if they're too heavy and you can't make a frame in time? Okay. From Mount. It's probably his follow-up from last week. Oh, is that your follow-up from last week? Okay, so for those of you that don't know, Jan's one of our students. The kid's a little nightmare on the mat. He's He soaks up knowledge, so him and his sister both, so thank you for asking. So here's the deal with frames. Uh, the better the angle, the better the frame. Just like a choke. The better the angle, the better the strangle. So it is really all in the angles. Sometimes you need uh, a lot of movement, and sometimes you need a lot of finesse and you got to know when to do each one. So a drill that you can practice, if the person, if you have partners that are much bigger than you, get me the mount, please. Okay, so, yeah, and what I'm gonna do, just so you know, set up for a sec, please. If you know this, awesome. If you don't know this, or you're kinda new, pay attention, okay? When I make a frame, I do not want this hand on the outside because it'll slide down. I want this hand here. Now, if you use your thumb, a lot of people will, until the frame goes bad and then you can injure your thumb. So I recommend not depending on your, they're good to eat, right? They're, you gotta watch them with frames though, okay? So I would do this and see how my hand turns. Watch my elbow come up. So if he's low, this is a good frame. If he's high, you turn and you make sure that you're not over your wrist, that you're over the bone in this arm. So put some weight down, please. Now just sprawl, fly. Yeah, you should be able, okay, put all your weight on. You should be able to do this easily. Can you lift your hands? Very easy. Okay, now watch my hand. When I turn, it's very difficult. So you have to move in opposite directions. Uh, this one heavy and this one light. And look. So the key is with the frames. And what I recommend, especially if you're in the beginning, white belt, blue belt, training for a while, purple belt, you should really know, but we're still improving. I've been a black belt for six six years and I'm still learning every day, but it's the little details like JP was talking about, is it's not this, turn your hand, and you can see my elbow move. This is where you want the weight, right here, because this bone is behind it, and then right here is where you want the weight, because a bone is behind it. Anytime it's like this and you move it, it's now very weak and you're relying on muscle. So, if the person has you in the mount, you should make them so uncomfortable that they don't trust their own movement. They're like, okay, I got him in the mount. Yeah. I don't want to move, right? <laughs> because I've got him or her in the mount. So uh, Jay and I hope that helps, but uh, the weight really doesn't matter too much. Now, weight will always overcome leverage at some point. So um, it goes back to the analogy of the jack. If you have a two-ton jack, man, you can lift a lot of weight but you can't lift a four ton truck. So <laughs> leverage will run out at some point, but it, uh, it, is, it is an equalizer in many cases. So I, I hope that helps, Jay, and we'll see when we get back to you, though. Do we have any more, or should we go down the list? Go down the list. Okay, so the next one was from a friend of mine, JP, uh, and he said basically in a comment before that he went to a seminar with Master Sauer, my instructor, Master Peter Sauer, and uh, he says, he made a comment that really stuck with him, and he says, well, if you're stuck in a move, you made a mistake three moves ago. And so the idea about that is, and this is why jujitsu is endless, and it's an infinite learning process, because anytime you get caught in a submission, especially by a higher belt, you can be pretty sure, not always, but you can be pretty sure that they set you up to get the reaction that you gave them which contain the submission, right? So uh, there's a million things to do. So lay down for a sec, please, head here, feet here. I'll give you kind of an idea, and then I want to go over just a few little details uh, that make a difference. Okay, so when I'm here, you'll see a lot of people, and this is actually, it's called, a, it's a variation of Kiskatami. It's not Kiskatami. Kiskatami traditionally is here, but this is one. So now, I want this arm. So am I just gonna grab it? I could. I mean, it makes sense, but really what I want to do is start doing this and, and that, yeah. Okay, so that's one. So I'm gonna start bugging, moving, yeah. So look, I put one here, two, and I push. 
Now I have this. Now straighten this arm out. Here we go. That doesn't work, I go back. And so bring your hand back up, please. Yeah. And so the thing is, is you're kind of leading and guiding the person. And there's lots of little details when it comes to your body that you have to learn about. And sometimes in Jiu-Jitsu you learn about like your own reactions and you're like, man, I don't like the way I reacted to that. Totally normal, we've all been through that. Welcome to the club, my friend. Okay, and then sometimes you learn something that you did and you're like, oh, I kind of impressed myself. And then there's everything in between. But the little details and the little frames, switch with me for a sec, please. This is a, a game changer if you get stuck in cross-eyed. And I seriously mean a game changer, okay? I'll give you this angle, then I'll move so you can see the alignment of my body. So we're gonna play a little bit of a game. I'm gonna put my hands right here, and my feet are within my hands. And this is how everybody bridges, upa, everything, you name it, right? So what I'm gonna do now is turn towards him, and I want you to put two hands on my shoulder. And I want you to just push me to the floor, <clears throat> okay? Push, <sighs> okay, I'm gonna walk my foot out, push. Push, 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 push. <laughs> okay, so now you're like, oh man, I'm shrimping, okay? First of all, don't shrimp sideways. Move up and shrimp on the way down. And if you try that, I promise it's gonna help. It may not look like it's very high, but all you need is this to move. What you don't do is this. And I see a lot of people in the beginning, they bridge, they move, and their feet are all over the place. If your feet are off the floor when you shrimp, or when you bridge, I don't even see how you bridge with the feet off the floor, but people try. You did it to yourself, okay? So now, let's look at the alignment of my body. So come over here, please. If you can look at my heel, my hip, and my shoulder, okay? What I'm gonna do is I want you to just push me back. My hip, my heel, and my shoulder are still on the same line. Now, you're gonna see this gets increasingly difficult, but not impossible. Push. It's much harder, but you can still get this foot off the floor, okay? So now what I do is I put my foot like this and I shrimp a little more. And he's still gonna get me over, but it's a lot harder. <clears throat> okay, so now look at my shoulders. So I have one, two, now push. All you want, push, 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 push. Look how easy this is to recover guard, right? Yeah, because my body is a frame. And so what you have to do is get everything in alignment. Nothing can be leaning this way. You have to move your whole body. Hips, shoulders, heels, push. Yeah, and when they push, yeah, exactly. Now you have all the energy to do whatever you want to do. And that's it. So the little details are what make everything. It's like, you know, in most races, not all, but most, What's the difference between first and second place? An increment, right? That's it. It's the same thing in jujitsu. So if you can master accumulating increments, stealing them, tricking them, using tactics, whatever, leverage, just keep accumulating them. And when you accumulate them, you get out of the escape or the position. And so I hope that helps, but your body, frame with everything, your hands, feet, you name it, everything. Do we have a question? Tyrion Scott says, avoiding punches when on bottom and half guard. Self-defense question. Okay, so <clears throat> Tyrion, thank you. He watches everything that we do. So thank you for watching and tuning in, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to do my best to provide some insight. But my personal, I just want you to understand, like, my personal view on this. Um, and if you have a different one, that's awesome, man. Maybe we can train and have lunch someday. But uh, is not to get punched in the face as much as possible. So you have to depart from some of the training. You may have to depart, not you, but anybody. You may have to depart from some of the training that you're accustomed to. So in half guard, okay, I see this a lot. Come on this side, please. So let's look at a couple things. I'm gonna give you a bottom explanation at the top. If I'm like this, first of all, don't triangle your legs. This is good to hold on, but now I can't move. So this is, this is one, okay, two. What, what I need for most sweeps is to get this arm underneath and lift. Now, what does he have? A lot of punches in the face, okay? So I don't really want to do this. There are some people that can pull off this. Uh, I personally don't want to put my arms under someone's body when they can punch me in the face, at least as much as possible. So you can bring this, so you have to decide, am I gonna get too close to get hit or am I gonna get too far away to get hit? 
Now, when you're like this, here, come in, yeah. It's a little harder. And what the person's going to do is push your face. They're going to frame. They're going to frame. And now you can get up. Okay, if it's difficult and you can't, let me just say this. That technical stand-up from this is like the most underrated thing that you can do. And you have to use your feet. So come in, please. Start, yeah, here, here. Push, push, yeah, push, push. And you just hook the leg and pull, okay? So come here, that's one. Two, if my knee is here, this is very different touch. So play a game, yeah. Yeah, and now what I want to do is get in and move. Boom. Here. I want to keep you away, go ahead. And now I'm going to get back to the guard. What I don't want to do is just hang out here. And if you look at a lot of fights, like Randy Couture was like, please put me in half guard. And man, he rained down one victory after another from the top position. You have to use your legs as a frame. Push. Get your shoulders away, not just your hips. Shoulders, yeah, move. Look, hook. This is different. Now, kick, push, stand up. If you're here, what a lot of people will do is grab this wrist. Yeah, and then I'm gonna pull, put your knee over it, and you kind of get in this cruise. Man, this is bad. So now, what do you do, okay? Okay, so what do I do here? Switch and move, right? So watch my feet. Here, hold, oh, pushing my head. I don't want to push my head. I get this foot in and I put this one here so I don't lose it. And now I put it over here, look. So now I'm out of his half guard. This foot is key. Lift, put it here. If I'm like this, put me in half guard. No good. Lift, put me in half guard. Here, now watch my knee, up over, bring this here. So, I hope that helps a little, but the basic idea with any jiu-jitsu, specifically jiu-jitsu, is you have to get so close, it's hard for them to hit you, or make a frame so you're too far to get hit and then get up. And uh, it just depends, you know, but from the guard, it's the same thing, okay? So, you'll see this a lot. Depends on who teaches you and do whatever you want, right? But I don't want to do this. Sit up. It's very difficult. I'm going to get punched in the face over and put gloves on and see how much your jiu-jitsu changes. So I'm going to pull in. It's going to change a lot. If I don't want to get hit in the face, look. One, two, here. And I'm just going to hold. And he's not going to tap from this, but now my elbow will sit up now. Yeah, now watch this. Pull your hand out. We're going to pummel for this hand. So hold like this. Now, just like this, put your hand down. It's much harder because my elbow comes in, right? Now I can move. Yeah. And so I hope that helps a little bit, but you want to make sure the person lifts you by the middle of your limbs when possible, not so much that just the end. So it's kind of the same thing with a clinch, right? If we're here, I don't want to hold you out here. I want to be on like this, connected. And you put weight on them. And the more they carry your weight, the easier it should be. But sometimes you can do all the right things and it's still not easy. And that's okay, but I hope that helps. Carry on. And Nisha Higher Math is asking, how do you escape an arm bar? Okay, okay. Anisha, I'm so glad you're watching. So I guess you're probably, this is, she's the sister of the young man that just asked about getting out of the mound. I'm glad you're asking. So I'm gonna go over an arm bar from the guard and how to get out, and then we can do one from the mount, okay? So, put me in the guard, please. Jujikatami, double, yeah, okay. So number one, do not pull. If you do that, you're gonna, oh my goodness. Okay, so there's a couple of things here. I don't want his head to spin under me and then push me over, okay? So, yeah, I'm gonna put this right here, here or here. You can even hold, now they can't go under. Lift your hips, it's harder, it's not impossible. Hey, lift your hips, because my thumb is up. Yeah, I'm still in the arm bar. So what, the next thing I do is I put weight here, and I pry with my knee. Take this hand and I turn the palm up, and I push this way, or I pull this way. Get my arm out and then go to the position, go to the cross side, okay? Or kind of like the back. So let's go over this again. Armbar, 
Do not lift. If you do this, I, I can't think of a worse thing to do, really. Okay, so now here, put weight into the person, push me away. So what they do is they'll spin. So put your head here, like this, and now pinch. Turn this this way, move, push, and then you're right into that position. <clears throat> the next one, get me in a, I'm working cross side, double legs over. Okay, I want you to watch my feet more than anything. Watch my feet, Anisha, okay? All right, so watch. He's got me in an arm bar. Everybody's been here. If you've never been here, you haven't trained long. So here, he's gonna go straight back. This is good for him, this is bad for me. So now let's look at this way, turn this way. Okay, what most people do, and if you don't do this, awesome. If you do this, please pay attention and try to get some of the little details out of this. So when he pulls my arm, and then I start to go, it's too late, okay? Now there's a point where everything is too late, okay? So here, I'm gonna grab, hook, pull. I'm gonna move my legs before this goes, and I'm gonna open my arm before he pulls it against my will, here. And now, hook this wherever possible. Now, what happens? Put your leg over my head, please. Your left leg, like for a triangle. Your right leg, yeah. People will do this, okay? So how do you stop that? When I'm here, and this is like this, keep your head here. Do not lift your head. You're gonna get triangle choked. Here, head down, walk, walk, palm up. Get your position. And you stay so connected that the person can't scoot away and lift their leg to either recover guard or put you in a triangle. So Anisha, if you could do me a favor, if that helped, give it a little like or a smiley face or whatever you want to put in there. And if it didn't, please let me know because I want you to do this when you come back to the academy and start training again. So let's, do we have any more comments? Um, I think this question is about that arm bar. It's Mike Danenberg, what if he walks his shoulders back and goes belly down? Okay, so, well, there's a lot of what ifs, okay. Mike, thank you for asking that, so come here, please. All right, so if they go belly down, man, you made a lot of mistakes, okay? And that's why you don't let the person spin. So you have my arm bar, yep, here. And they go belly down like this, man, you're in trouble, okay? So now, there's a couple things that you can do. Number one, if it's fully extended, you're done. It's just like, what do you do? There's, a, there's an analogy I like, you can just picture this. If you're on target, once the bullet exits the barrel, you're probably gonna get hit, okay? So you have until that point to make the counter move. So this is here, okay? So there's a lot of things to do here. Number one, I don't want my thumb out. So you can push in and turn. Now you go, okay, extend, 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 move, 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 watch. Here, but if he goes completely belly down, there's very little I can do except turn my hand this way and step over, just like this. So, I hope that helps Mike. Now, let me just say, if the person gets it on and it's too late, it's too late, but remember the three phases of jujitsu and any way to get out of anything before it happens is defense. During it, while it's happening, is a counter. And after pretty much everything happened the wrong way for you, that's where the escapes take place. So escapes have the least likelihood of success because more was given. Counters are kind of an even exchange and will rely on skill and timing. The defense relies on everything. And that's how come sometimes you roll with someone and they almost feel like an immovable object. And you're like, you're not really moving, but I can't move. Or I can move, but I feel like every move is a mistake. And the analogy I like is if you go in an ocean and you let the waves hit you, you get crashed upon crash, upon crash, upon crash. Then when you learn to surf, you cut the angles and you get it. But if you go underwater, whoop, everything goes over you. Now you have to fight the current, not the waves. So, um, 
that's a good way to look at it, the before, during, and after. And so uh, it's as simple as that, but it's not as easy as we would like it to be, which is, you know, I mean, how many times have we even caught, like, too many to count. Too many to count. I don't even know. So, uh, but I hope that helps, Mike, and I appreciate you asking the question. And uh, hopefully someone will get something out of this, too. I don't think I answered his questions. Okay. Brian Whitman said that looks awesome. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so do us a favor now. Remember, like everything, Bailey is sitting here. So Mark, Adrian, Bailey's behind the camera. Thank you, Bailey, making everything happen. She's reading your comments to us, your questions. So shoot her a message on the live feed and we'll get to it uh, just as fast as we can. And we'll wait a couple seconds. And if we don't have a question, we have a list of questions that came in before this. So uh, thank you for submitting your questions. We appreciate it. Brian Morales says, nice concept, explanation about he says before, during, and after. Good, okay, good. Yeah, you know, I, t I don't know why it took me so long to figure that out, but I was like, how do you put this in a very easy to understand way? So it's just, it's funny. But okay, let's move on to um, hooks and grips and everything else, okay? So we'll start with foot position first uh, with some grips together, mostly from open guard, and then how do you get the person to step in and make a mistake, right? So the thing is, you got, we have to really understand, like you have to start to learn to understand your own tendencies. And uh, some people move slow and smooth and fluid and they just get out of everything in the nick of time. Some people look like they're not even trying and you roll them and it's like rolling a mountain. And then some, it feels like you're rolling a wood chipper. You're just like, I don't know what happened, man. And uh, you know, all of the styles of jujitsu are effective, but I think me, as I get older, the less I want to impose my physical self, I'll, I'll rely on it, and I train myself to be as physically fit as possible. But if you have a car with a really good engine, you know how to drive it, you probably don't need nitrous and turbo too much, except for once in a while. What you don't want to do is exhaust yourself and then have poor technique. So your attributes will always leave you, and time, no one escapes that. But what will never leave you is the ability to align your body in the right place at the right time as long as you train, more so. So uh, let's just go over a couple of guard concepts. <clears throat> All right, so when he's here, and last week we went over this a little, and I wanna just build on it again. So how do I get him to stand up with a certain leg first, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, make this leg heavy and this one a little lighter to get him to bring this leg up first. Go ahead and just move right over, okay? So, while it's simple, man, that works all the time. So now, if my legs are equal, equal weight distributed, he's gonna stand up whatever way he's dominant. Probably, if he's a right-hand person or a left-handed person, he'll pick the dominant side to stand up with, which I think is okay. Most of the population is right-handed, so they're gonna put this one up first and then start, yeah, right? So, now I'm gonna put weight here. And now, yeah, look, it's very easy, right? And then you can start to move and sweep, okay? So, the way you distribute your weight on someone is just as important as how you move your limbs, okay? Now, if I want him to stand up, I'm gonna sell him thinking that he's getting this grip out of my collar. So go ahead, please. Yeah, keep going. Here, boom. And then now this, there's a choke, right? Okay, so the idea is, you thought you were getting away, you start pulling, pull, pull, pull. Oh, it's perfect for me. So now I'm gonna lift my legs up, I don't take them off of you, and then you move and look. Here, boom, choke. And I keep my feet just like this. And now it's hard for him to spin away, because what happens with this choke a lot is the person spins away. So that's one idea. The next is with the grips. <clears throat> now the person's gonna be more cautious because every time they move, you attack them. So you can go here. A lot of people like to do this. This is fine too. Stand up, please. I'm gonna push one more than the other, and then I'm gonna start bringing hooks. Yeah, look. And I'm gonna start moving and upsetting your base. And the whole time, what I want you to do is this. Yeah, come back, please. So then you're too smart for that, yep. I push and I pull and you put that knee down and then I go this way, right over. So, the idea is, when you're on the bottom, you have to make the person move with urgency that they believe 
will get them out of danger, right? So you can do it slow too. I mean, an avalanche can move slow. It's still an avalanche, man. Okay, so you don't always need to be the fastest person, but it can help sometimes. Timing is more important than speed. So here, stand up, please. Yeah, so now, keep going. So now what do I do? Look, I don't put my feet here. Hook. Now I'm gonna push and pull. Yeah, and now, so now what are you gonna do? Look at my grips, they're not palm down, pull. Very easy. Come back, pull. Yeah, nope, now watch. And that's it, so when you get the person to pull and base, just lean towards one foot and all, even, all my weight went to this foot, so this one could just get knocked out. And they're just very basic principles executed in like, you know, you'll hear about advanced jiu-jitsu a lot. Like, what is advanced jiu-jitsu? What is basic jiu-jitsu? Basic jiu-jitsu is the bread and butter that you'll do forever. The reliant movement is more important te than technique in the beginning, because you can understand an armbar, but if you can't move, the armbar is no good. You won't get it. So you have to get the movement. Then, as you progress, typically, most people will go through what I call a technique acquisition phase, where you want to learn all the new fantastical stuff, and you come to class and you're like, man, I saw this thing on YouTube. You should watch YouTube if it helps, right? Just make sure you watch from people that know what they're doing that can teach, and um, not just impress you, right? And then um, you're like, okay, man, I got all of these techniques. I know thousands of submissions. And then you get your purple belt, and you're like, okay, now I got to put them together. <laughs> And then when you get a brown belt, you're like, okay, I kind of feel like I, I know my game. I kind of know who I am in jujitsu, but man, I need to tighten up a lot. And then you get a black belt and you're like, well, I can't believe I got a black belt. I feel like I don't know anything. And anyone that has ever gotten a black belt will tell you, I, I believe will tell you the same if they're honest. If people, I don't know anyone that got a black belt and like, man, I know it all now. Uh, We've met some people yeah. though. That, like, <laughs> and have that impression. Yeah. But you know, the, the truth of it is, is if you really can look at yourself, you're never gonna stop learning. And the belt is just a byproduct of the work and the judgment and the criteria that your instructor put in. So don't be in a rush to get belts either. Like, you know, that doesn't mean sandbag and hold, and hold people back either. It's gotta be kind of this appropriate level, but your coach, your instructor should always tell you exactly what they want you to work on, in my opinion. And if not, I think that they should be a bit, little bit better at communicating because our job is to help you. But we have to understand too, like all the little things that make a difference because you can show someone an arm bar and you're like, mm, okay, yeah, man, that works. And then you just ask someone that's been training 20 years to show you an arm bar. I mean, I think, how long could we teach? An uh, uh, arm bar for? Yeah, hours. Hours, <laughs> right, hours. Where a new person would be like, I don't see how. And then the people that have been training are like, have a seat, man. <laughs> and you know, and you break it down and you're like, oh my goodness. So uh, make sure you learn from other people too, you know, like I learn from everybody I meet. All we, I just don't know what it is in the beginning, but all we have to do is spend time together and I guarantee the people around me are gonna teach me something I didn't realize. And, uh, and if they don't teach me anything, they'll teach me patience, hopefully, right? But uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes that's it. But um, I hope that helps. Please, we have about 10 more minutes. Just make a comment on the feed uh, or we'll continue to go down the list. But uh, these are things that are important to me. I teach all these concepts to my own students. It's what I personally believe. And uh, I also get asked a lot too, like this for the self-defense. How can you possibly do self-defense on the ground. So let me just kind of uh, put it this way. Self-defense does not mean don't compete in jujitsu. What self-defense means is try not to get punched in the face as much as possible. Keep in mind that the person may have very malicious intent towards you. They may have a weapon and they may strike you whether you want them to or not. Now in a competition, you both agree to the rules and you're kind of like, okay, these are the rules. No heel hooks, heel hooks, no neck crown. Okay, fine. Now there's a mutual agreement and in a rule set and the, both people basically want the same outcome. In self-defense, the person has no regard for your life in most cases. And really your goal is not to beat them up, it's to go home safe and see your family. 
it's not to be like, yeah, come on, get some, Bob, we hook, cross, hook, kick, knee, elbow, clinch, guillotine, choke, take him down, whatever. That's not really what it is. Self-defense is get away from the situation, protect everybody you're with to the best of your, and get home safe. That's it. Now, if you want to beat them up, that's a fight. That's different, right? If you, know, if, if you want to beat them up, that's your decision. But there is a difference between the two. And I would like to show you a headlock defense and how that translates to a sweep on the ground. And you can do pretty much all of the self-defense jujitsu that you do standing on the ground. But you can't always do on the ground what you do standing up. And that's just like anything else, not everything flows both ways, but most everything in self-defense goes to the ground. And uh, you know, when you introduce weapons, that's a completely different story. And, um, but you know, we can address that another week. Okay, so let's start with this here. Okay, so there's five basic headlock escapes. And let me just say this, this, all the way down, this is not how you start headlock defense training, right? So let's start with number one. Just put your arm around, please, just like this. Oop, hit connect, lift, it's easy. This is one. Okay, I missed that, go ahead. My head gets pulled down, now I'm like this. I step in, and I move, and I look up, and I put my hip in. And then I go, and that's two. The next one is he pulls my, pull, just pulls my head to the floor, look. And then there's the counter to that, okay? It's very easy, it's very fluid. It's one of my favorite examples of the essence of jujitsu, which is really taking their momentum and either hitchhiking or slingshotting with it. So now, what does that look like from grappling, right? So here, I go like this and I grab and he sprawls. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, look here, right over. Yep, right into the position. So anytime you can get the person to freeze or pull really hard or push really hard, there's always an opportunity. And Master Sauer uses this analogy, and if you do too, wonderful, but I like it. And that is you're in a circular room full of doors. And if you open one, all the doors close. If you close one, easily one or two open. If you slam it, six open. So every time you open one, a door will open up somewhere else, and your challenge is to figure out how to get to that and how to navigate to it while you remain a, uh, a sense of calm. And a friend of mine, man, if you ever get a chance to train with him, train with him, Jeff Caron. Mm -hmm. Guy's amazing, man, let me tell you. But he had an analogy one day when we were training and he was teaching us something, I forget, but the guy's an encyclopedia and I think it was, oh, it was Butterfly Guard. And uh, he says, you know, so somebody asked him, what advice would you give to someone starting off? And I 100% believe in this, but I never heard it explained this way. He says, some of the most deadly predators on earth, lions, and he uses a lion for example, they take their cub and they play they grab it by the neck and they throw it a little bit. And as it gets bigger, they throw it a little harder and a little harder until the cub gets mad, right? And then the cub is serious. And then of course the parrot is not, it's like, okay, whatever. And so jujitsu kind of gives you that, but as that cub grows up, it has learned in a very playful way how to fight and survive and be a predator when necessary and also be a survivor when necessary. And uh, I really like that analogy because when you train, you can't go 100%, 100% of the time. You should go 100% sometimes, and there is a time for that. It's just not every time. And if your coach says, go light and flow, don't go 90%, call it 20%, which... Happens more than, uh, more than we'd like to admit. <laughs> more than we like, yeah, some people would like to admit. But, uh, and then I hear people say, well, flow rolling is reserved for higher ranks. Now, I don't, really, I don't, I don't agree with that, man. Um, I have my own kids, they're 16 now, they've been training since they can walk. You just play with them and it's fun and they don't know. And then as they get older, you put a little bit more pressure on them and a little bit more. But what you can't do is overwhelm them so much that they're like, I don't want this, I don't want any part of this, right? Because you have to assimilate into the mental toughness that jiu jitsu builds, requires, and maintains. You can't just plunge, some people can plunge into it, but not everybody. Most people don't know how tough they are until they do things like jujitsu, and then they awaken inside and they're like, man, I had no idea I could roll all these people and train or defend myself. And yeah, you're gonna lose in the academy. That's the place to lose. Outside, that is not the place to lose. <laughs> so lose as much as you can in the academy and uh, you'll be better outside of the academy. 
And uh, most people, when they start, their friends will roughhouse, right? <laughs> like, they, how long did it take before your friends stopped? About two, three years, maybe. About two, yeah. then they're like, they're a little stubborn, maybe. I don't know. And they just, they don't even bother anymore. And uh, when people meet you, this is one of the things I like about it too, is you have this nonverbal body language that just exudes confidence. And that's one of the many things that it does. And to me, it's one of the benefits. So we have time for one more. Do we have one more question or comment? Uh, Michael Brown asks, does uh, having a black belt qualify you to teach? So, okay, Michael Brown, thank you very much. Man, let me tell you, this is, he's an old school JKD Kali guy. Man, a guy's got a lot of knowledge. Thank you for a a a asking that question. So the traditional answer is everybody should have a black belt. And uh, I understand that and I agree and disagree with it, with it at the same time. So, uh, and let me explain where I'm coming from. If you can teach, and I mean really teach, not just get in front of a group of people and share information, like you understand how to teach, you understand the learning styles, you can communicate and articulate your points in a way that makes sense to most people, and then you can read the room and shift. You may be an amazing teacher uh, in many other things except for jujitsu, and you may be amazing at teaching jujitsu, although you're a lower belt. And personally, I, I've seen lower belts teach much better than a lot of black belts. Now, having a black belt doesn't mean you can teach either. Let me just say that. And you know, sometimes people don't like that too much, but I have seen black belts teach, and it's like, okay, I learned, but you know, and, and if they ask the question, like, man, what do you think I need to? Sometimes the delivery is what you need to work on. If you're a blue belt, you should teach up to your skill set and comfort level. If you're a purple belt, the same thing. Um, now, if you own an academy, this happens sometimes, you're lower, a lower rank than some of the students that come in. You have to have really honest and open dialogue and they're gonna mentor you and bring you up. But if you're a blue belt, purple belt, a brown belt, and you don't have someone mentoring you, you really need to. And I don't mean just once in a blue moon traveling somewhere. You really need someone to talk to, call. If you have a question, you should ask like you know um, so the other thing is and I see this sometimes and I talked about this a little bit but if you're a blue belt purple belt brown belt and I was too I my academy and I was a purple belt other people are gonna come in you really have to make sure that you have a good academy culture you set the tone but also you need to lead by example and I don't mean just get in front of the class and teach I mean lead by example by showing everyone that you're still a student, that you still learn, that you, you don't know it all, and you don't act like it either because people that don't, people that usually, not always, but usually people that have a lot of knowledge will tell, be the first to tell you that they don't know much. It's the person that tells you they know a lot that usually knows very little. And if you're nervous and you're a lower belt and you have an academy, go find someone that will help mentor you and just, just go. And um, sometimes you have to be a little embarrassed and go ask for people to help you. There's a lot of good people that will help you teach jujitsu, uh, that will help teach you jujitsu and also teach it to you the right way and uh, help you build a good academy. But uh, I hope that helps, Mike, but I, I think you should have the skill level of a black belt in teaching to teach. Now, um, we, you, te you teach here all the time, and, and you guys, he's an amazing instructor. And Bailey teaches, amazing. Um, but we teach at our skill sets, right? And so, if you have a black belt at the academy or more than one, let me just say, you're very fortunate, man. And if they're a good human being, <laughs> you are very fortunate. So, um, do the best you can to find good people, but most good people will bring up everybody around them. And uh, don't ever be embarrassed to roll people, too. Like, you're supposed to get caught in jujitsu. You're supposed to get tapped out. You're supposed to tap people out. That's just how it is. And um, you know, only the new students ask, like, "Hey, can you tap everybody out?" <laughs> no, who can do that, man? You know, but can you train and can you teach? And the answer should be yes. So I hope that helps, Mike. But um, that's kind of my thought: is you need to, you need to. I'm still a student. I mean, I've been training half my life, and. I feel like I need to improve every single time. And if you're teaching, you should feel the same way, in my opinion. So, do we have any more, Bailey, or? Um, he also wants to know judo versus jujitsu. Okay, so judo versus jujitsu. From a jujitsu perspective, you need to learn judo. It's just that simple. Or a crap, or an art that has throwing. If you do judo, I think you should learn some jujitsu. And I think everybody should cross train. And for Mike specifically, and I started in the art, JKD, Kali, Muay Thai, the, the, the mindset of the Jeet Kune Do, the JKD art is um, to be well-rounded in as many things as possible and to be real. Now, um, 
It doesn't have to be specifically judo. Judo came from jujitsu and then turned into its own sport. And then jujitsu kind of re-evolved into its own thing. And so it's kind of a tree that branched out, came back, and then re-branched out. But um, people call them close cousins. But the word ju, right, gentle, do is way, and itsu is art. So it was Kano's jujitsu, and then it was jujitsu, and then it was judo, and then it was judo. And then jujitsu kind of had a bad reputation many, many years ago. And so uh, when the Kodokan formed and, and jujitsu was still being taught outside of that, everybody knew jujitsu at the time, and then judo took its own direction. But they're both, they're amazing arts, man. Why would you not want to learn both arts? I love judo, man, and uh, a lot of the throws. And if you're training jujitsu, I think you should really learn at least a couple, at least two or three throws, and one or two versions of a takedown that you get good at. So uh, that's my opinion anyway. We do throws here, and I think you gotta know them with the gi and without the gi, for sure. Whether it's judo, sambo, catch wrestling, judo, uh, sand shadow, whatever it is, you should you should know some throws and takedowns for sure. Chaz said you're dropping some knowledge bombs. Oh, well, thank you, Chaz. I appreciate it, man. Good to see you here. And uh, so everyone, just a couple things before we go. Number one, Bailey's behind the camera, so give Bailey a thumbs up. We'll see all the thumbs for it. Thank you, Bailey. Adrian, thank you very much for teasing and being a wonderful ookie. And, uh, Keep the tradition of jujitsu alive. Keep the art part in jujitsu. It is about being a better, being the best person that you could be uh, in a real way, not a superficial way, but be the person that helps everybody, that brings everybody up around them. Everything that's going on in the world today, we're going to get through this. We've gotten through everything to this point. Why would we not get through this too? Um, the thing that we have to do is rely on each other be cautious and be safe, but know that we're gonna come out of this and everything is gonna be better for it. Martial arts will bounce back. Jiu-Jitsu is gonna explode, in my opinion. And uh, so, if you could do me a favor, because we're doing this every week and we wanna do it, please uh, share this. Please like our academy page, Integrated Martial Arts. Share this with your friends. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and have a wonderful time. Comment and let us know what you want us to cover next week. We will be here next Tuesday at 7 p.m. It'll be Bailey and I out here and Adrian will be behind the counter, behind the camera. But uh, thank you so much, Mark Rickrow. Adrian Inc. Take good care. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. Well done.